What's going on? I'm Sam. This is Griffin. Today, I want to talk about BarkBox, our experience with it, the good, the bad, and why we just canceled our subscription. So BarkBox is awesome. I got it for Griffin, and we've had it for the last, like, three plus years. Every month, we get a box. He gets super excited for it. Once we adopted Jackson, he also gets excited for it. And it comes with two toys, so they each get a toy. We give them an option to pick which one they want. I alternate each month of which dog gets to pick the toy for that month. So I forget who picked first last time. I think it was Jackson. Hold on, bud. So Griffin. Griffin, you get to pick which one you want. You want that guy? <gasps> Jackson, you want this one? Good boy. So when they get these new toys, these toys become their absolute favorite and they'll play with them non-stop for a couple weeks. Sometimes they mix in their old toys, but usually they just go for the new toys for a while. And if they ever find an old toy that's been stuck like underneath a bed or couch for a while, they realize that that one had been missing and that one ends up being one of their like new favorites or something. They'll just start playing with that again. But when they get these new toys, they kind of try and steal them from each other. They all usually have squeakers in them, and one of the first things they do is rip the squeakers out, which is kind of good for us because it makes them a little less annoying. Once the toys become a little too messed up and destroyed, we do throw them out. Bark actually puts a print on the inside of the toy that says it's time to throw out. All good things come to an end. So that's kind of cool. We don't always go by that, but once they get kind of unrecognizable is when we throw them away. We've got BarkBox so long that they have this entire thing of toys that they can pick through. So every day they'll kind of go pick some out. When they get bored of one, they'll go get another. They're really, really spoiled and they have this giant toy collection that they probably wouldn't have had without BarkBox. The box also comes with two packages of treats. I think the treats are supposed to be pretty healthy. I've never looked too much into it, but we've never really had to buy treats or toys uh, since we've been on BarkBox for the last three plus years. And as you can see, we also have a big stockpile of treats. And because we have so many toys and treats, that's pretty much the main reason I'm canceling the subscription. So what I haven't touched on so far is price. I think BarkBox is around $23 a month right now. Assuming that you pay for the six months at a time, if you pay it for it monthly, I believe it's a lot higher. If money is tight, I would definitely skip out on this. It's a subscription, so chances are you're going to be subscribed for a lot longer than you expect. I, when first subscribing, thought this was going to be a short-term thing. I did not think I was going to accumulate these boxes for over three years. You can do a one box, one time type of thing. And I've actually done that as a gift before, but you're starting to get into the price where it makes more sense just to go to the pet store and just pick up a couple toys and treats. For me, I would only subscribe if I could get these boxes for about $25 or less a month. And I'm basing that on the price that I would pay for two toys and two things of treats where really I would love to have this subscription for like $15 a month, but that's probably a little cheaper than they'd be able to sell it for, especially when you look at shipping. When you factor in shipping, I mean, really $25 a month is pretty good if you can afford it. If you can afford it and want to try it out, I totally think it's worth doing. Even if it's not through this company, there's other companies that do similar things. I'm sure you'll get a good experience as well. It's kind of cool having these come in the mail and having your pup look forward to them. I still take Griffin to the pet store though, so we don't miss out on the experience of walking around. Sometimes he'll pick out his own treat, but very rarely do we pick out toys anymore. The major exception though is if I want to get something heavier duty that they can chew or bigger toys like this candy bar or this tug of war rope. If your dog tears through plushes, you could always get their uh, super chewer box. I don't know if that costs anymore, 
but we've had pretty good luck with the plushies other than stuffing just being everywhere all the time. So we have to sweep that up almost daily. Treat wise, if you give your dog a lot of treats, they won't last you long. And maybe if Griffin didn't get so many treats from Home Depot and all the places we go, I would be giving him more of these BarkBox treats. But we have so many saved up, I'm gonna cancel BarkBox for a few months. Maybe when we run out of treats, I'll resubscribe and they can get their new treats. It's really nice though, because I love how excited these dogs get every single month when they get their box. So I feel kind of bad for canceling, but I just plan on this cancellation being temporary. And I do want to resubscribe after their treats and maybe their toy pile goes down a little bit. But all of these are... It's been super worth it for me. We're gonna take a break. I'm gonna save a little bit of money and when it comes back, they will probably be super excited to get their boxes again. And that's one of the best parts is them just being super excited to get this box in the mail. The one thing I didn't really touch on is the theming. Every month there's a different theme. I thought this month was gonna have an Easter theme, but I guess it was a casino. We got the Lone Shark and the slot machine, which they tore up the slot machine right away. And all these treats were themed to the box as well. But now that I'm looking, I didn't even notice this before. It looks like the treats have gotten super generic, where we have two of these clucky jerky cuts. I guess this one's a little different. It's a clucky yummy, but it, Look at this, we have three of the exact same gobble turkey recipes. I mean, I guess they're actually all different, but this is not as fun. This feels way more generic than the older treats. And this is probably two, four, six, eight. So I guess like four months ago or so, they kind of switched from this and I didn't even notice. That's how much I actually pay attention to the theming. I do pay attention to the theming of the toys, but I guess I haven't paid attention to the uh, treats. So I picked an old random box. This one was the Mutt Cracker. They usually do some sort of fun puns. I usually don't really pay these any attention if I'm being honest, but there's a few different toys that they offer. And you usually, I guess, just get two random ones. Though I did say that we had a large dog. So I assume they give us some of the larger toys. I don't know if some of these are smaller toys they give the smaller dogs. Or if they have a completely different set they use. I do really like this company. I haven't really looked into them. I just like the product and their service has always been pretty good. They're one company that I tried to get sponsored for Peter's channel. And that never happened. We've never been sponsored by them, but I really do like the company. So I definitely tried to make that happen. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't have kept all these boxes, but I thought maybe I could do something cool at my work with them. Though I'm kind of glad I kept them because they make a good thumbnail. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. That toy's not actually from Bark. Jackson, you want to go get a ball? Go get a ball. Jackson, get a ball. Why don't you want a ball? Go get a ball. Did you play too hard and fall asleep? You're so good. You're such a good boy. Oh my gosh, you're so tired. You're so tired. <laughs>